a tribute to the creator of Vim, Meta's new AI audio tools, how do CPUs work exactly, and a pick of the week that is obnoxiously obscene, but I think I love it anyway. All that and more on this episode of The Download. Welcome back to another episode of The Download. I'm your host, Christina Warren, Senior Developer Advocate at GitHub. And this is the show where we cover the latest developer news and open source projects. Please like and subscribe. So I'm going to interrupt our normal early show banter to discuss a very important announcement. Taylor Swift is releasing her re-recording of her seminal album, 1989, on October 27th, 2023. And I am not the only one that is ecstatic about 1989. Taylor's version. Uh, GitHub CEO Thomas Domke actually commented on this just last week. Uh, it is his favorite album and he can't wait. And as he said to me this morning, we're out of the woods. I, I'm, I'm excited. Uh, nine years to the day of the first release, I can't wait. All right, enough of that. Let's get into this week's news. The big story this week is a sad one. Bram Molinar, the creator of Vim, passed away last week. He was 62 years old. And Vim, which stands for VI Improved, is a text editor that started out for the Amiga, actually, and it was a clone of, of the Unix text editor VI. Um, but it's gone on to be what, as the register puts it, is probably one of the single most widely used Linux programs of all time. It was first released in 1991, and for a long time, it was the default text editor included with most Linux distros. And it's been ported to every platform imaginable, and it's inspired new forks like NeoVim. As I said, it was released back in 1991, and it's been a staple of the developer community ever since. But beyond just code, Bram also gave back. Since 1995, Vim has been known as Charityware, and so if you opened Vim without specifying a file, it would direct you to a message that says, help poor children in Uganda, type colon help ICCF for information. And the ICCF is a Dutch nonprofit dedicated to helping children in Uganda. And Bram not only founded the ICCF where he was treasurer, but he donated any money that he got from sponsorships related to the, the development of Vim to that organization too, which is just amazing. Vim 9 was actually released last summer, and the project is going to continue under its current team, although there might be some behind the scenes changes with where things are hosted, and the future is, is probably gonna you know, look a little different. I've got a bunch of links down below to tribute to Bram, um, the Vim repo, which is on GitHub, um, links to the ICCF, and actually also a, a link to an interview that he did last year um, about Vim and, and its history, which is really great. Colin WQ Bram, you will be missed. Moving on to some AI news, Meta last week announced AudioCraft, its open access generative AI for audio toolkit. And this comes hot off the heels of Llama 2, and Meta is going to give researchers access to its tools and AI models for generative audio. So AudioCraft is actually three different things. It's music gen, audio gen, and in codec. And this is how Meta describes these things. Music Gen, which was trained with Meta-owned and specifically licensed music, generates music from text-based user inputs, while Audio Gen, which was trained on public sound effects, generates audio from text-based user inputs. And then there's Encodec, which is a decoder, and that allows for higher quality music generation with fewer artifacts. As I said before, um, these are things that are aimed at, at researchers. Meta says that they're open source. That's a little bit too complicated for me to get into on this show, but there's still a ton of stuff for regular developers to play with too, um, and, and researchers. But even if you're a regular developer, even if it's just for fun, this is really cool. I've got links down below to Meta's announcement, uh, the GitHub repo for AudioCraft, and links to the docs and API documentation that they've got. And I really do think that we are gonna see some cool music AI tools in the next few months, and this might be the first step. Speaking of AI, Microsoft recently created an AI hub on GitHub, yay, uh, for all of its AI stuff that, um, that I just discovered this week. So I've got a link for it in the show notes, naturally, but uh, it's on GitHub where you can use GitHub discussions to talk to the product team. And the repo itself has a ton of guides for getting started with Azure OpenAI for all kinds of developers, whether you're JavaScript, Java, Python, .NET, whatever. It's a really great resource, even if you're not using Azure, but you want easy access to a bunch of the OpenAI resources and projects, so that's great. As I said, um, a link for this is down below. And now it's time for my GitHub project spotlight. And this is when I pick my favorite project of the week uh, from the GitHub community. And this one is actually a website that you can access at cpu.land, great URL. And it is from 17-year-old Lexi Matic um, and Hack Club. And it's a delightfully written guide to how CPUs work. And I ran across this the other day, and not only did it bring back a lot of my early computer science classes from like a million years ago, but I was floored by how well it was written and illustrated 
and, and how the content was displayed. Lexi, this is fantastic. I love that you created this. Even better, the source is all on GitHub and there have already been some updates and improvements, including a one-page um, version and a PDF version of the content. I love everything about this. Lexi, you are awesome. Keep hacking. And now it is time for my pick of the week. So I'm gonna be honest. What I'm sharing is kind of obnoxious and ridiculous, but I think I, think I kind of love it, I think. So Nerf, Hasbro, whatever, they just released a new blaster that is apparently the best ever. It's called the Nerf Pro Strife X, which, okay. And if you look at the photos, this thing is intense. It's definitely more intense than any Nerf blaster that I had as a kid or even an adult. And I worked at a media company where I was frequently sent toys to review or to terrorize my coworkers with. But this thing is, is a lot. It has a USB-C charger, a lithium ion battery, and it's taken on many of the design elements that the third party Nerf community um, has adopted with their own mods. Side note, I was not aware that there was a Nerf modding community. Um, I'm not really sure why I was surprised that this exists. I, I guess I'm not, but <laughs> until I read this absolutely exhaustive and long review about this, this blaster uh, from Sean Hollister at The Verge, I did not know that it existed. Uh, look, as I said, this is too intense for me, either at work or at home, but as I said, I, I think I love it. So let me know your thoughts on Nerf Blasters or any of our other stories in the comments down below. That's gonna do it for me. If you like this episode, please give us a like and uh, go ahead and subscribe to GitHub's YouTube channel for all of your nerd needs. See you next time.